sljedeću prezentaciju. Čemo imati preko webinara kolega Ilan iz Observe IT-a predstavit će jedno vrlo interesantno rješenje vezano je za snimanje sesija. Svakome od vas, malte ne ovaj prizvod treba, svi većinom imate neke outsource servise, third party strane, svoje lokalne administratore, jedin način da ih nadzirete je putem session monitoringa. Kolega Bojan će uspostaviti web sesiju. Ok, so let me just share my screen and let me know if you can see it. Can you see my screen? Yes. Ok, perfect. So let's talk about Observit, about the user activity monitoring and uh, the, my presentation will be uh, split into two parts. I have the presentation and then a quick uh, demo. So let's go over the presentation uh, first. Um, as we know today in the security world, uh, all the um, physical places from uh, offices, banks, uh, um, like um, entrance to a building, even at homes, everything is being covered by uh, security cameras. Uh, today it's very common and if you uh, recall about uh, 30 years or 40 years ago there were only cameras maybe in uh, banks or a, a very highly uh, regulated or secured uh, places but today it's common to have a camera in every place, in shops, in streets uh, and everywhere even though that uh, it might be sometimes expensive to place those kind of cameras but there is a need to take a photograph or, or a video of all user activity in the, the physical world. And the reason is because uh, users or us, as uh, the people that want that, it, the, we want to monitor the real-time activity. We want to see what happens if we want to uh, audit the crime scene or audit the uh, situation. And obviously, the very important part is that if uh, you, uh, if the user knows that he is being recorded, it will influence the user behavior. So that's a very important fact. When you have a camera, also it impacts the user behavior, and the user behaves differently when he knows that he is being recorded. Anywhere in the world, it's the same. If uh, you know that a there is a speed camera in front of you or if you come to an office when you know that there is a security camera recording your activity so you're going to behave differently. In the computer world when users are accessing computers or servers this field is uh, just emerging so the potential of the market is huge because just now we are in the beginning let's say about 20 or 30 years ago, when the market in the physical world started, we are just here right now when more and more customers, more and more users want to record user activities. And you can see now today, currently in computers, we have some kind of recording of user activity. If it's logs or any other kind of recording softwares, but it's a, the recording becomes <laughs> brings uh, the information uh, in very low granular information like logs. Here you can see the Windows Event Viewer and you can see that the logs and the information is very uh, technical and does not provide enough information for you to understand what's going on. You would like to have inside this window maybe this kind of replay button video that you can click on it and then you can see the video step by step what the user is. This is much more intuitive, much more easy to understand what the user is doing uh, versus seeing the logs in the event log. As we know, many important applications do not produce any logs. For example, the registry editor. Registry editor is a very sensitive inf uh, utility and when you activate the registry log, uh, editor and you maybe you can uh, 
delete, add, modify <coughs> some key in the registry, no events are being produced in the Windows Event Viewer. There is no evidence. Also, when you open the SQL manage Manager, Todd, BI, Notepad, uh, Notepad, of course, to edit the uh, configuration files, edit the host file, <coughs> or any other uh, important uh, files in the Windows system or in the Unix system, uh, there is no evidence or there is no logs of the user activity. What Observit produces is the following. Our solution is the following. When the user login to into the machine, into a server, if it's Windows or Unix, automatically our agent will start recording the user activity. Our agent is a very low impact in CPU in memory, so there is a no evidence or there is no impact in performance when the agent is working. The agent will take a screenshot of the user activity. Keep in mind that also Observit is optimized to take user activity only when the user is active. It's like a motion detector detection. So when the user is not active, there is no recording. When the user is active, we take a screenshot. We do also video analysis. We collect information about the video, like the, the window title, the application name, the process name, and of course, the user ID, the timestamp, the server name, and also the client ID from which the user got to this machine. So if I'm doing RDP, also my client name is uh, detected, and that information is being sent to our database for uh, then for you to do the auditing. So you can, of course, do a search on top of this data, and we'll get you all the results based on your uh, search criteria, including a link to the video. Our solution covers a lot of aspects of the business from the security, compliance, operation, and the high-level business. As for the security, our customers using the solution for decreasing the risk, keep an eye on third-party con contractors. Let's uh, switch to the demo so we can see the solution real quick. Uh, in Observe It, you can record uh, many machines like uh, Windows and Unix, many types. We have, uh, let's, let's just uh, switch uh, to the deployment. You can see the deployment, how it is deployed. We have a server, this one, on which we install the Observit server. Then we install the virtual camera on machines, like agents. You can see those agents are installed on Windows, Unix, Citrix, terminal servers, any kind of gateway machines, all the machines that you want to record, you can install the agent on. The information then is being sent to the application server. Data is being saved into the SQL server. That's our database, which is SQL server. And we also have a web console. That's another application, the web console, from which you can browse the sessions. The web console connects to the database, and you can browse from it the sessions. This is the web console. You can log into the web console using any Active Directory user. It's integrated with Active Directory. So you can define here the, and then I can log in to that server using my AD account. And I can see all the sessions by server or by users. That's the server diary or user diary. Also have the configuration and so on. In the server diary, I can click on the three dots. And then I can see here all the servers on which I have an agent on. So those machines are being recorded. Then I can select this machine. That's a Windows machine. And then I can see all the sessions that happened on that server. I can see the session duration, begin time, end time, the login, the user ID, the server, the client. This is the machine for which I RDP'd to that server. So I have here the uh, also the client name, the length of the session in slides, and the video. Then I can click on the video and, and see the video. Let's take another video like this one from, uh, let's take another one, like here, that one. And click on the video, it will open for me the player, and I can see step by step, screen by screen, what the user is doing without uh, touching the 
of course the keyboard and mouse now I just I can watch this uh, session like a movie it's moving screen by screen step by step and I can see what the user did in this uh, session okay also I can see that in the slide I have here the a watermark on the slide that contains the server name and the timestamp and also I have here the session analysis I can see that the user here opened uh, the notepad that file with notepad I can click on the notepad and then automatically I can see what the user did in that notepad file and then I can uh, select from that list this is the Windows title uh, where I want to go uh, I can close this one also by the way I can see here by click on the plus sign the same metadata this is what we call the metadata the uh, video analysis I can see all the Windows title in which the user uh, visited I can see here command prompt I want to see what the user did click on the video and then I can see what the user did here in the command prompt then I can click on the play and then I can watch the session from this point on so it's very simple, very intuitive. So I have the video, I have the metadata, and then I can, of course I can play it where, from wherever I want. Uh, secondly, also of course, once I have all this metadata available for me, I have here the search, and I can search in my database. I can search for the user activity. Let's say I want to see who edited the host file. And then I can click on search in the past you can see here last five years in my database it will search my whole database for anything that contains host it can be a key logging it can be a, a, like a window title by the way observatory also captures key logging which is very important thing here you can see that the, I have here activity the host file was opened by Andres on the the 5th of February on uh, that server and I will click on the video and then I can see here it is you can see the host uh, file was opened by uh, Andres and then I can play and see what the user did if he modified the file if he um, saved it or not maybe copied some things so I can see all the user activity that he did on that host file let's close this one and by the way you can see here that uh, we have here very simple report I can search by the keyword and then I get here the kind title server IP name and video and this is a very simple and quick report that you can generate from Observit but we have also more advanced report you can generate reports based on things that you like you can uh, create your own reports and customize it for example here is a report that generate all the admin related tasks in the past uh, week and you can see that here I have a more complex filter and also I have a different layout of the report I have a login name, domain name, username, server name, application name, window title and so on and also a link to the video so I can click on the video and you can see what the user did okay so that report can be also automatically scheduled for uh, to your mailbox so you can run it at any time you want and you can get uh, that report being sent to your mailbox at uh, any time you can see if I close that one I go to the report you can click on the schedule here and in that page you can decide to whom to send that report and when to run it daily weekly monthly and at what uh, time and that report will be sent to you to your mailbox ready for you to get um, let's go back to the server diary you can see that in the server diary I have the sessions by servers the same I have here for the user diary I have now sessions by users click on the use three dots and you can see all the users that are recorded let's say that I want to see what uh, this one Tal did uh, and then I click on go and here is the activity of user tal that's the user tal underscore y and then I can see all the user activity and uh, again click on the plus sign I can expand and see the metadata as well by the way for every session 
you can see that uh, we have your messages. Those messages, uh, messages were displayed to the user when he logged in, and this is what he replied. And also, I want, if I want, as a manager uh, or as an auditor, I can add a comment. Let's say that session was uh, audited by me, and say, okay, uh, approved uh, by uh, Ilan, and uh, so anything I want to add here, and that comment will be added to that session. Okay, so it will be added here to that uh, place. Now let's go ahead and talk about the uh, Unix. Observe it is enterprise solution uh, that uh, addresses the uh, Unix and Linux uh, session as well. And uh, let's take uh, another box like this one. You can see here that I have a Unix uh, box. That's the name of the box. And then I can see the session. Here it is. You can see the duration. User did login by root. And then I can click here on the video and see what the user did. Okay, so it opens and they will show you the details of the session. By the way, a very important note that you can see here that the user did login as root and the secondary is NA. In the new version that we are releasing this uh, next week, we also will be able to identify the secondary for the, of the real user of the user that did uh, the root. We can, of course, block his uh, session and ask him to identify himself using his Active Directory user ID. Uh, as you can see here that uh, when in the, uh, in the case of Windows, when the user logged in as administrator, we could identify the user is the real ID, but in Unix it is uh, going to be released only by uh, next week for all Unix and uh, Linux. So then we can identify that user. By the way, if you can uh, really quick look at the video here, you can see that we are recording the terminal of the user, all the comments, and also you can see here that we use it here ls, innocent script ls, log out. And if I click here on the video, I can see on the metadata, I can see that the user did also rm and a file, a directory was removed. Directory finance was removed. And actually the user did not type rm. The reason we see rm is that that rm was generated from the innocent script. So observe it for Unix Linux can record also all the system calls that were done in that interactive session, even though that they are not displayed on the screen. All the system calls that are being executed by a script, like that one, will be captured by the observe it and available for you for the search. So I can go here in the search, for example, let's go back to the search, and I can search like who removed the finance folder? So here it is. Who removed the finance folder? And I can see that it was done by obviously few users, not only one. Go to the demo system. But here it is. You can see that uh, the finance uh, was removed by user root in that case. And here is the RM. And then I can click on the video and I can watch the session. I can go to my. Uh, Let's go to the server that I was looking before, like this one. And here it is. That's a video on that server. The use the finance folder was removed. And I click on the video, and I will be able to see that it happens on that innocent script. You can see the place. It brings me to the point where the RM was done. So it was done in the innocent script. Okay. So uh, now let's go to the configuration and talk about the capabilities, how to configure the camera, this virtual camera. Uh, and I want to show you some stuff here, very important, because uh, Observit is addressing businesses and uh, you need to have uh, some kind of configuration uh, items. First of all, you can configure the, co the console users, who, who is permitted to log in into the console and the permission of uh, the sessions, like uh, who can see what, which sessions. You can uh, limit the view of sessions to per user or per servers in the permissions, so not everyone can see everything. 
Uh, here in the server policies, you can see that we can define recording policies. You can define recording policies as you want, many recording policies. You can define a recording policy per agent if you want. Uh, and let's look on the default Windows uh, best policy. That's the generic policy for Windows. You can see all the options. And here you can see that uh, we have here ability to control uh, the camera. You can see that enable key logging is optional. You can decide if you want to record the, the key logging or not. Uh, also, you can define all here in the identification policy. You can define all the shared accounts uh, for, which, uh, for which the observed agent will pop up a, a request for you to identify yourself. That's the same for Unix and Linux. You, you define here the root account, and then when the user logs in at, as root, automatically the observed uh, agent will ask him to provide his Active Directory login. Also here you can see the offline policy. If you enable it, when the connection to the application server is uh, terminated or uh, goes down, the network connection, then observe it will continue recording in offline mode and store the data locally. And when the connection restored, the information is going to be sent to the application server. Also you can see here that we have here the user recording policy, which is very important. By default, observe it records all sessions from all users. You can control here which users to record and exclude or record only the following users. So that's a very important feature because sometimes you do not want to record all users, only specific users. Also here you can see that you can control which applications to record. You may want to record all applications, which is the default, but you can also control which applications? We have two types of applications, of course. We have the Windows applications, which are those ones in this line, and also URLs. So when the user opens the URL with the Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, then you can specify here which URLs to exclude, or maybe record only the following applications to record only specific applications and URLs. So that's a very important feature. So you can control every camera, every installation can, can be controlled separately. Here you can see that you can define login messages. When the user performs login to a server that is being recorded, you can convey to the user login messages like you are being recorded or any kind of message that you want the user to be aware to. Um, Another thing that is very important is the archiving policy. Of course, uh, when the recording is uh, running for a few weeks, few months, maybe few years, then you can automatically run here a job that will archive data from the main database to the secondary database, or you can automatically also delete. If you do not want to archive, you can just say, okay, I want to keep data for three years, and then automatically delete everything that is older than three years. So that's uh, optional. So that's the how you configure Observe It. Uh, one last, last thing I want to show you, the user experience when the user log in to a machine. So let's go ahead and do RDP. And I'm going to do RDP to a machine that is being recorded, like this one. And let's uh, connect to that machine. So I'm now uh, trying to uh, log in with user administrator. OK, and I'm going to provide my admin password. And then click on OK. Now see what happens now. Observe it blocks me to my desktop and asks me to provide my Active Directory user ID and password. OK, so that's the way how Observe it identifies my ID in uh, when I try to log in with a shared account. Now, this is another feature which uh, you may want to use or not. That's integration with third party ticketing system. Here I can provide a ticket number that will be recorded in Observe It and also in the ticketing system. And uh, that's optional. You can read about it later on if needed. And last thing is you can see here that uh, those are the messages that uh, I am conveying to the user. I can tell that's a pop-up message. I can uh, convey them uh, to the 
that is being recorded. Also, I can uh, type here, please uh, uh, add the uh, reason for your activity. And then you can type here, fix the SQL uh, server um, approved by Steve F and extension, da 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 da, and then finish. Okay, and then now the user is being recorded. All his activity is being recorded. You can open a file shell and uh, like, let's say, do dear. And uh, I can now minimize it. And then I can go to the Observe It Server Diary. And I can see the new session. You can see here on that, that's the server that I've just logged into. So that's my session. You can see administrator, user Ilan. That's a server, and that's my laptop ID. That's the, my laptop uh, ID, and also you can see the my laptop IP address. And you can see also the slides, and you can see here we have a special icon that represents that this is a live session. And then, I, of course, I can click here on the plus sign, and I can see what the user did so far. The last thing was the active, activating the Windows PowerShell. And uh, then I can, of course, view the session also in live. By the way, in this case, when the user will perform some kind of activity, you will see that uh, it will um, move or change in real time, this uh, player. There is no need to do anything. It will just uh, move in real time and show you the user activity uh, moving in real time. Also, when you have a live session, you can also remotely lock the session. You can see that we have here a lock message. I can remotely send the agent a request to lock a session. If I see a like, inappropriate uh, session or um, I need uh, to lock the session, I can do it remotely. Also, if I want to export the session from here, I can click on HTML. That's uh, available for you anytime. Like I can say, I want to take uh, screenshots 2 to 5, 2 to 8, let's say, and export to HTML, and automatically all the screenshots will be getting to this uh, place. Then I can control A, copy, and paste it into my email, Word document, and send it out to anyone I want uh, for further uh, investigation, analysis, and uh, so on. Let's say uh, close this one. Let's close this one. Any any questions? So that, that's the end of uh, my demo. You can continue. Okay. If if the if you have any specific uh, questions, I would be happy to uh, answer. Okay, let's talk about the future uh, roadmap, just quick. In the future roadmap, uh, we plan to uh, enhance the solution and uh, provide uh, more scalability. By the way, the solution today can be scaled up to thousands of uh, uh, systems. So you can record uh, thousands of agents concurrently by installing multiple application servers. So the solution can scale up uh, very easily. Uh, but in uh, very large enterprises, we have uh, maybe a need to install two separate databases and merge them together, so that will be addressed. Also, we plan in the, the next version to uh, add uh, rules and alerts uh, into the solution, so when the user will perform activity that uh, you want to get an alert on in real time, so uh, you'll get, uh, you'll get, you can define and observe it that rule, and automatically you'll get it. For example, I can show you uh, something that we have created uh, uh, real quick here. If I'm opening here the registry editor, let's see, if it, I'm not sure if it's gonna work for us, but uh, let's see, run, reget it, and then uh, I can uh, click here, and uh, let's see if I get an alert, or I can show you a previous alert that was uh, generated. Um, in my email, delete options here. Here I got uh, some 
alerts from observe it. This is an old alert, as I call it, from a system. Uh, here is the, the alert information. You can see that I got it from observe it. All the information about the alert, in that case, uh, the user logged into a server, that server, and the user opened his Gmail account, tried to log into the Gmail. So I, we kind of suspect that the user tried to copy some information out using Gmail, which is, a, of course, a, we do not want user to open his, their personal account on our servers. And then uh, we also provide all the information, timestamp and all the, the data. And also we provide a link to the video. So you can click here on the video and you can see a link to that uh, session. Okay, so it will shortly open for us the thing. And then we can see if that server, hopefully, if it's uh, active. Probably that server went down, so it's not active anymore. Let's go back to here. Okay, so uh, um, uh, two more things to cover uh, if we have time. Uh, the DB activity. Observe it can record the DB activity uh, from the clients, like uh, SQL Management Studio, Todd, SQL Plus. Uh, and the other uh, third-party clients. When the user opens the client and uh, types any kind of a command, then SQL command, then that command will be captured, like this one. You can see here that they have here all the details of that command. I have here the select statement. I have here the client software. Also, the information about the database on which database it was performed. Also, the DBA user. And uh, then also a link to the video, which is, of course, obvious. Uh, I have here also very long comments, like let's take another one, like uh, let's take uh, this one. Here is by another user. You can see that uh, we have here also uh, another uh, link. Here I go to the select. You can see it automatically it takes me to the place where the user did that select statement. And then I can click on the video and I can see what the user did from this point on, maybe he copied some information, maybe he viewed the information that he's not allowed to view, and so on. Another thing is the threat detection. In the threat detection, I can view sessions. I, can, uh, I have a dashboard, and I can view sessions that may be suspected. I can see sessions that were done on night, like night and weekend activity. I can see infrequent user applications. I can see most active computer now. Of course, it's a demo system, so it's not, it doesn't have a lot of uh, good information to show. Also, I have here infrequent used login IDs, so very rarely login IDs, and uh, more and more dashboard. Also, I, we have here a dashboard for leap, leap, uh, frog. Leapfrog means that the user uh, RDP to one machine, and then from this machine, they use the RDP to another machine. And then and that's what we call a leapfrog. And then uh, that is also captured by uh, observe. OK? Any questions? I am uh, done. So there is a, that's the end of my presentation and demo. Excellent.